So now we're going to talk about the binary logit model. Like I said at the end of the last video, that is uh, an example of a logit model where there are only two alternatives. We actually talked about this last week also as, as an example of, of applying the random utility model. So if we only have two alternatives, so we're in a binary choice, then the logit assumption gets us to these choice probabilities that are even much simpler. Right. Remember, in the, the logit choice probabilities, the denominator is summing up over all alternatives the exponential of, a, of representative utilities. And so when we only have two choices, that means we only have, or two alternatives, that means we only have two, uh, two terms in the denominator. And so it's really simple to express this thing. So the probability of alternative one is just exponential of V1 divided by exponential v1 plus exponential v2. And similarly, uh, the, the choice probability of, of alternative two is, is the same, but with v2 in the numerator instead of v1. I, I think the words make less sense there than actually just looking at the math here. It's, it's just a really simple expression that only has two, two terms in it. Uh, there are some, some alternative ways to, to express these choice probabilities, though, that I think make it a little more clear how we're actually going to estimate something here. So a more succinct expression, if we just talk, think about alternative one, right? We really only have to think about one alternative in this case, because the other one is just one minus that. So once we have one choice probability, we kind of like get the other one for free. So a more succinct, succinct expression for the choice probability of alternative one is, is this choice probability right here in the middle of the screen, which I get by just dividing by if we take this first expression up here and just divide the numerator and denominator by the uh, by the numerator, then we get this expression right here. Now we only have two terms. And, uh, we only had two terms before, but the V1 showed up twice. Now it only shows up once. So it's just even less to keep track of, kind of. So it's a slightly simpler uh, expression here. If we make that common assumption of representative utility being linear, Right, if we do we say that those v's are just beta times x, then we get this right here. We get that the choice probability of alternative one is one divided by one plus epsilon, uh, sorry, one plus the exponential of negative beta times the difference between x's. So if we focus just on this exponential term right here, we have this nice uh, linear expression for representative utility but then it gets plugged into this exponential and we've got some division going on. And, and so anyway, at the end of the day, this choice probability, it contains this nice linear expression inside of it, but the whole choice probability itself is nonlinear. So we can't use OLS here, right? We can't express, we can't use OLS to directly estimate parameters that are nonlinear or to directly estimate a model that's nonlinear in the parameters. Let's write this in a slightly different way though. Let's go back to just, just general representative utility, the Vs, right? We can write down the, the odds ratio of alternative one. So that's alternate, the probabil choice probability of one divided by one minus the choice probability of one. We call that the odds ratio. You've maybe seen this in other, uh, I don't know, other settings somewhere where the odds ratio pops up in, in economics or econometrics. Well, because we only have two choices, the denominator here is just equal to the choice probability of two. So now we've got choice probability one divided by choice probability two. And that's gonna equal, if we just do the math, the exponential of alternative one's representative utility minus alternative two's representative utility. If we take the log of this thing, then we get the log odds ratio. That's what we're gonna call the left-hand side here, the log odds ratio, just equals the difference in representative utility. So we're getting something pretty simple on the right-hand side here. If we go one step further, we assume representative utility is linear. Now we've got this expression, the log odds ratio is this linear, function of some parameters that we need to estimate and, and, and the data of each alternative. 
we've kind of imposed here that we want to care about the difference between the data. At the end of the day, we might allow for, for uh, parameters to be different for alternative one and alternative two. So we might want to just kind of more generally express this thing uh, as the log odds ratio is just this linear function of parameters and, and the data on, on about both alternatives. So now we've gotten ourselves to this place where we have a nice, simple, linear, I mean, this thing might kind of look like an OLS on the right hand side, right? But the left hand side does not. Okay, so we've got something where we've got a simple linear function on the right hand side, but the left hand side is now nonlinear, right? I mean, we, if we knew choice probabilities, we could calculate this thing and uh, uh, estimate a linear model, but we, choice probabilities are kind of something that gets estimated inside the model. We don't actually know those. Uh, but it turns out what this thing is, even though it's not a, like a linear model that we can estimate using OLS, it's part of this broader family of models known as generalized linear models. And the idea here is that we can kind of create something on the right hand side. This is like a, a really coarse description of a generalized linear model, but we can create something linear on the right hand side that's going to be uh, equal to something on the left hand side that's not, uh, not itself linear, but that is kind of a, a a, a, a specific transformation of, of an object that we know. So this generalized linear model, we can estimate this thing in R using the GLM function, GLM for generalized linear model. We just have to tell it the argument family equals binomial. We'll look at this in, a, in an actual example later on. We'll, we'll see exactly what we mean here. But the point is, once we've gotten this thing to this kind of somewhat linear model, this generalized linear model where the right hand side is linear. Now we can estimate this in R really similarly to how we estimate an OLS model. The actual estimation that R is doing is going to be very different, but the way that we interact with R to estimate this thing is going to be really similar. Uh, I do want to point out this only works on a binary logit model. We can only use GLM for a binary logit model because it's implicitly just one comparison that can be represented by one, one equation. When we get to more than two alternatives, three, four, however many, estimation gets more complicated and we're gonna have to use something other than GLM. But let's take, a, let's just dig in a little bit more and look at a specific example. We talked about this example last time. A person is choosing whether to take a car or a bus to work. We observe the time and the cost of each alternative. Let's specify representative utility like this. Uh, representative utility of, of, of alternative J is gonna be some intercept term plus beta one times the time of that uh, times the time of that alternative plus beta two times the cost of that alternative. So this thing here might kind of look like a, look like a, a, I mean, this is a linear model. If we knew representative utility, we could just estimate these things using, uh, using OLS, except we never actually observe representative utility, right? So we can't use OLS here. But if we plug these into some of the expressions from a few slides ago for load, binary logit choice probabilities, we can get these nice expressions here. They look a little messy, uh, but ultimately we can see that there's this kind of linear, linear function buried inside of there. Uh, it, it's plugged into this nonlinear function, but there is this kind of linear term here in the exponential. So we could also take the log odds ratio and we end up with, once again, this really nice linear right-hand side. The left-hand side's not linear, but the right-hand side is. And so if we actually had these data and we wanted to estimate this model, we could use the GLM function in R. We could give it uh, either these, these variables uh, ind individually or the difference between them, uh, tell R what the choices are, what the data are, and it would estimate these, these parameters for us. So that's what we can do for a binary logit model. It's going to be a little more complicated with the multinomial, and I'll spend a minute talking about the multinomial logit model in the next, uh, in the next video.